following lecture was produced by Glorian Publishing, a nonprofit organization, and is one of hundreds of lectures freely available via download, podcasts, streaming radio, and transcription. These lectures range in topic and complexity in order to address the many needs of humanity. We invite you to browse our library of lectures, books, courses, and articles to find teachings that suit you. Through the support of donations, Glorian Publishing has published 40 books, hosts international retreats several times a year, offers free online courses, and many other valuable resources, available to anyone worldwide. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Your donations make it possible for this free public service to reach thousands of people every day. To make a tax-deductible donation in any amount, even anonymously, visit GnosticTeachings.org. Now, with heartfelt wishes for the end of suffering for all creatures, we begin the lecture. May all beings be happy. If you uh, examine the word uh, Adam, you find that the letter Aleph is the beginning of the name, and the letter Mem is the end of the name. So if we play the letter Aleph here in Keter, and the letter Mem in Yesod, which symbolizes water, then you only miss the letter Dalet of the name Adam, which is written with three letters. Which, of course, in this uh, alchemical point of view, relates the, of the mystery of Dat, which begins with Dalet. So if you see the name, the mystery of the name of Adam is Adam a Dalet Mem. Keter, the first Aleph, Dalet in the mystery of Dat, and Mem in the mystery of Jesod, Adam. That's why when the Kabbalists talk about Adam, they always end here in Jesod. They don't go further. When they talk about Malkut, then they refer to the feminine aspect that emerges from that Adam. But if you notice, we missed the letter Shin, which uh, has a symbol of a trident in the name Adam. And the letter Shin, we have stated, is in the center, in the very heart, which is the Sephirah Tifereth, which means beauty, and that relates to the human soul. So why is not the letter Shin within the name Adam? It is because the fire, the letter Shin, encloses the mystery of creation, the mystery of evolution, development, and different steps in the Bible. For instance, in order to write fire in Hebrew, you take two letters, Aleph, which symbolizes air, and Shin, which symbolizes fire. So both letters spell fire in Hebrew. And of course, from these two letters, uh, spread the name man and woman in Hebrew. How do you uh, spell man in Hebrew? You spell it with Aleph, Yod, and Shin. In other words, you take the letter Yod 
of the sacred name yod he bab he and put it in the middle of the fire. That yod symbolizes the phallus in alchemy. So then you find the word ish sounds like fire also. But if you want to write female or woman, and then you take again the word fire, Aleph, Shin, and place the letter He at the end of the name Yod He Vav He. And then you read Isha. So, in other words, the word men and woman in the Bible relates to the fire. And in order to point the man, they point the Yod. That's why we, in many lectures, state. That the yod is a phallus. It's very clear. The fire in the yod. And we stated also that the hay is the uterus. Because is the word fire relates to the hay, isha, the uterus. Of the second name, yod he bav he. That's why we said that the name, the second name of God, the tetragrammaton is yod phallus he uterus vav men he woman of course the shin is a mystery that's why you find that this uh, mysterious letter is has a shape of a trident of the, of the very top of the head of the trident. <coughs> and uh, the gods that have control in the waters always use the trident. And uh, for instance, in, the, in Greek mythology, you find that Neptune, Poseidon, which rules the pineal gland within which we find the atom of the Holy Spirit controls the sexual waters with the power of the trident in his hand. If we go into the Hindu pantheon, we find the god Shiva, which represents the Holy Spirit also. Hold the trident. It means the fire. So the gods, the Elohim, control the water through the fire. And this is very significant because the whole mystery of division of sexes and the alchemical work that we have to perform within ourselves hides or is hidden within Shin. Let us go further into the book of Genesis. And you find that the word Ma'im means water. If you take the first Mem from Ma'im and always only leave Yod Mem, Im, that means ocean or sea. So, relates, of course, to the waters, to the hydro, we will say, in Greek terms. So, the word for heaven, or what we find in Genesis, when it is stated that in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth, the word heaven begins with the letter Shin, which means fire. And you read Shamayim, or Shin Mayim. That means fire and water together. That's heaven. 
or what in Sanskrit we call akasha. So in this uh, uh, way, we understand that in the universe, everything is hydro and fire. Water and fire. The two mysterious letters that symbolize water and fire are within, in heaven. But let us go down into our physicality. Because this is precisely what we want to emphasize in this lecture. Remember that the physical body is a microcosmos of the macrocosmos. So, in the microcosmos, physicality, human being, the physical body, <coughs> we find two waters that relate to creation, as we find the tree of life, two waters that relate to creation, Shamayim and Mayim. Shamayim, we always state it, relates to the mystery of that, that sephira, which is underneath the first triangle. And the other mayim, without the fire, without the sheen, is here in Yasod. Those are the two waters. Those waters are what, in Genesis, in the second day, is stated. Let us separate the superior waters from the inferior waters. The superior from the inferior. Or as Hermes Trismegistus stated in his emerald tablet. Separate the inferior from the superior and the superior from the inferior in order to perform the miracle of the unity. Of course, that miracle is a miracle of creation. So, the physical body was created in order for us to perform that creation. And that's why the physical body is called the mixture, where we find all of that that we talk about the tree of life inside. Where do we find Shamayim? That uh, fiery water in us, we find it, of course, in what we call the central nervous system. The central nervous system is formed by the brain and the medulla. The medulla and the brain are floating within Shamayim. That, that uh, uh, is called the cerebral spinal fluid. That is that liquid, that fire, that represents the positive aspect of the creative energy or the sexual energy. The medulla, the brain, uh, absorbs the elements, the necessary principles in order to develop. When floating in that liquid. But exists also the passive liquid, or what we call mayim, and that we always refer to yesod. And then we always state that it's related with the sexual genitalia. Of course, in the male organism, that uh, fluid is called semen. But also we call, in the female organism, the fluid of the uterus, and that are created by other glands in the female organism, we also call it semen. Of course, there's a difference between the semen of the female organism and the semen of the masculine organism. 
As you know, the ovaries create the ovum that flow into the uterus in order to be fecundated. But really, Yesod, which is the feminine aspect of the creative energy, is female. It's called the woman in this uh, alchemical sense. Because the cerebral spinal fluid is male. That's why when we talk about uh, the brain and the spinal column, or the spinal medulla, we call it Adam. That is the Adam. But the fluid of Yesod is Eve, Chava, as we said in Hebrew. So this is what we always have to state in the physical organism. Adam is the brain, and the medulla, and Chava is precisely the female creative energy. And it is easy to see if we go into the female organism. The woman itself, physically speaking. When a woman gets pregnant, immediately the fetus that develops within her womb is floating in water. That water, feminine water, contains all the ingredients, all the mixture, in order to create life in this physical world. But it is obvious that it is feminine. Of course, the water that we have in potentiality, in the archetypical manner, is called semen in the prostate, in the male organism. So both waters are necessary in order to create life, as you know in this uh, planet. So visualize that. And of course the fire, which is in the cerebrum spinal fluid, is that fire, that shin of heaven, that needs the assistance of the counterpart. Because remember that we stated that's why Adam, or in other words, in alchemy, the man is called Ish. You find the sheen there with the Yod. But the woman is called Isha. Hmm? And this is easy to understand and comprehend when the Bible explains that Adam, when Eve is taken out from him, he says, and she, or she, she should be called Isha. It doesn't say she should be called Eve. It says Isha. And it says, the, the Bible says in Hebrew, because she was taken from Ish. So in other words, the division of sexes that we find in Genesis relate to the letter Shin, relates to the fire. The creative fire of creation of the letter Shin that are represented in Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Keter, Chokma, Bina, Brahma, Vishnu, Shiva, and many other names related with the same Trinity, which is that the Holy Trinity that creates the Holy Triamatsi Kamno that needs to perform that creation in us. And that is precisely in our sexuality. But if you see, the sexual creative force is not only in the sexual organs, but also in that fluid that circulates in the central nervous system. In alchemy, we have to extract because the division of sexes, as we explain in other lectures, is made because we need to develop the brain. 
We need to develop the throat. In other words, the cerebral spinal fluid needs the assistance of the feminine fluid, which is called semen, in order to perform the miracle of creating the human being within us. Now, it's something that you have to know in Hebrew. There are many ways to say it, man, human. Of course, when we go directly to the, way, to, the, to the word human being, you know how you said human in Hebrew? You said enosh, or enosh, or enosh is human. And the word enosh has the letter shin at the end, indicating that is the outcome of the fire. Enosh. Because Ish is man, Enosh is human, and Adam is also translated as human. But it's more related to that human that is hidden within any man and any woman. It says a woman is Adam, and a man is also Adam. Because that Adam relates to the central nervous system. As we men have a central nervous system, the woman also has a central nervous system. So that Adam is in both sexes. But the mystery of the division of sexes falls into Eve, Chava. And this is precisely what is written in the first verse of the fourth chapter of the book of Genesis. It is written, And Adam knew Eve, his wife. Then you have to place your brain, your central nervous system, related with that, which is the mystery of alchemy. In order for us to know or to acquire knowledge, to develop the brain and all that related with the psyche, we had to know Eve. In, in other words, through that, to the mystery of alchemy, through Gnosis, we had to take advantage of Eve, which is a sexual organ, which is his wife. You see that? It says, first says, and Adam knew Eve, his wife. Why had to write his wife? We know that Adam was the husband of Eve, and Eve the husband of, I mean, the wife of Adam. To say his wife, that means his Isha, says there. And Adam knew Eve, his Isha. Hmm? So, the central nervous system, that's uh, cerebral spinal fluid knew the feminine fluid of the sexual, his wife. This is the two polarities of the sexual energy that you have to understand and comprehend that exists within each one of us. Adam and Eve. And then after that it is written, and she, the sexual organ, Conceive and bear Cain. And she said, I have gotten an ish. I have gotten an ish from Yod He Vav He which is translated as Jehovah. I have begotten an ish from yod he vav he, which implies all of that alchemical force in a man, in the human body. That Cain, the Bible translated as C 
A I N, but the real translation should be K. A I N, Cain. Because Cain is written with the letter Kuf, which already in other lecture we explain. The letter Kuf, it's hieroglyphic, pertains to the brain and the medulla. Relates to the brain and the medulla. You can hear, you can hear the, the explanation in the letter Kuf. So when we said Kuf or Cain, immediately we go to the letter Kuf and we understand that this name relates to the central nervous system. In other words, Eve begot Cain. That reasoning or that mind in the brain, in the central nervous system. That's why it is written that Cain was a tiller of the ground. That ground is a physical body. It's called Adama in Hebrew. Adama, which is Malkut. And if you see clearly here the word changes from Adam into Adama. Simple. Very simple. Adam is from Keter to Yesod. All the tree of life, all the Sephiroth. That's Adam. But if you add the letter He, which symbolizes Malkut, Keter, then you said Adama. The female aspect. The female aspect. Hmm? So then, of course, that uh, cerebral spinal fluid related with the central nervous system is Adam. That gets Cain from Eve. But that, of course, is a process of alchemy. A process, when we say a process of alchemy, we are pointing a process of sexual act. Because when we talk about alchemy, we talk about sexual alchemy. The sexual act itself is alchemy. It's a mixture of forces in order to create. Remember that I said, Cain, says the Bible, became a tiller of the ground. Keep that in mind and let us go back in the third chapter of the book of Genesis. When it is stated that when Adam and Eve ate from the forbidden fruit, Adam was kicked out of Eden in order to till the ground from which we have, he was taken. Do you see the similitude there? Adam was taken out of Eden in order to till the ground. And Cain was a tiller of the ground. It's easy to see when you understand that the central nervous system is Adam. And that Cain, that is the outcome of that, is the mind, which always operates in the brain. This is how you see it, clearly. Of course, when you see uh, the central nervous system, the brain and the medulla, what do you see in relation with alchemy? Comes immediately into your mind the hammer. That hammer that uh, is placed in the hands of Thor, that uh, mythological god of the Nordics, which represents the Holy Spirit. Thor, when striking his hammer on the rock, make lightnings and thunders, according to this uh, Nordic myth. But if we go into Greek mythology, we find also the Cyclops. The Cyclops, of course, 
are called cyclops because all they have one eye, related with the pineal gland. It is stated in that mythology that the cyclops were children of Neptune, children of Poseidon. Of course, because the cyclops reside related with the pineal gland, and Poseidon controls the pineal gland. And they are the ones that take the cerebral spinal nervous system, the central nervous system, holds all that, which is a symbol of the hammer, in order to strike it against the anvil, which is a feminine sexual organ. In any uh, uh, chemical laboratory, you find the hammer and the anvil. Both are of iron. In order to make the lightnings for Zeus, Jupiter, the cyclists have to hammer and do it in the anvil. When you go into the Hindu mythology, you find that mysterious symbol of the Lingam Yoni, which is an anvil united with the Yoni, which is just the head of the hammer. If you take that head of the, of, of the Linga, which is united with the Yoni, and then you just leave the Yoni and then you see, find the form of the anvil of alchemy. But of course, the mystery in order to make fire is by striking the hammer against the anvil. This is how the sparks of the spirit are released in the spinal column. That's the mystery of the forge of Vulcan, which is the same forge of the Cyclops. And the mystery of fire. This is why in the Bible, in the fourth chapter, it is explained that uh, <coughs> Cain, with time, in his generations, engendered Tubal Cain. You see? We find again the name Cain, but Tubal Cain. And which is explained that he was related with Smith, with hammering, with alchemy. That's why we associate always Cain with a Smith. Because the Bible explains very well that Tubal Cain was a forger of iron and copper or brass. Of course, this is the metal elements that you need in alchemy, which resides within you, because they are symbols. Of course, thereafter, the birth of Cain, who was a tiller of the ground, meaning that he was dealing with the earth, we find that it, the Bible says, And she begot again his brother Abel. That's the literal translation, which is completely wrong. Because if we read with the eyes of alchemy, with the eyes of Kabbalah, we see very clear that says there, And she begot siblings. The meaning is that the word for siblings in Hebrew means also brother, siblings. But it's written in plural. Ending with nun. And she again begot siblings and Abel. This is how the translation is. Mean that she begot two females. Enable. Some Kabbalists say, well, she begot one woman, enable, because that's what, what mean, the, the, the word siblings means in Hebrew. But if you translate literally, it says, and he begot his brother or his sibling, Abel. 
But Kabbalistically, the word that is behind siblings or brother is eth, alef tav, eth, which in Hebrew means she. It means something female. Havel, of course, and two females. If you don't know alchemy, if you don't know Kabbalah, you will be lost. What is these two siblings? Of course, she, the sexual organ, is talking about she, Eve, the sexual organ, begot siblings. That is the explanation of the division of sexes. But why two females? Because the sexual organ, always, as we always stated, is feminine. In other words, Eve split in two. He bared siblings. The first one is the sexual masculine organ, which is feminine, which is female. And the other one is the feminine sexual organ, which is also female. Because we always state the sexual organ is female, alchemically, cabalistically speaking, because the brain is masculine, always. Cain, with a hammer, always bits on the female aspect, which is the sexual organ. When we are working with sexual transmutation as bachelor or bachelorettes, we are controlling with our own particular mind, which in this case is Cain, our sexual energy, which is a female. The woman also. But when we marry, then we, the man, become the hammer. And the woman become the anvil in sexual alchemy. But individually, we have our own hammer and anvil when we do our sexual transmutation as bachelors or bachelorettes. Because this is the way when we, we practice transmutation. We have to strike the anvil with the hammer. And that hammer is willpower. Ratzon is how we say it in Hebrew. Ratzon. To strike the anvil in order for the anvil to release the flames in the spinal column. Of course, here we explain why uh, Eve gave siblings. And Abel, which is written Habel, the name, which means worthless. Worthless in the sense that is not proud or vain. When I said this, I remember in this very moment the Master Samael on the Or, when he was already self realized without ego. He always said, I am worthless. And I said, how is he worthless when he has all of that within? He says, in other words, I am futile, empty. Habel, in other words, in Hebrew. That worthless, positive aspect in which we don't feel that we are somebody else. Because when we feel that we are somebody else, then God is not penetrated in us. And when we are worthless, the being penetrates, and then we are somebody. That's the meaning of Hebel. It is when it is a vanity, but really is worthless or futile. How you have to understand. This is related to the breath, to the vapor that sparks, that sprouts from the striking of the hammer and the anvil in each one of us. This is how you see it, that's Abel. That's why it is written that Jehovah Elohim or Jod Chava was pleased with Abel or Abel and is pleased with Cain 
the mind. Why? Here comes the other word that implies the cerebrum spinal nervous system, which is korban in Hebrew. As Cain begins with kuf, korban begins with kuf as well, which is, of course, a work related with the central nervous system that we had to do. But if you remember, Cain was identified with the earth. Cain was identified with the senses because the brain relates to the senses, as we explain in all the lectures. In the head, we find the senses, the hearing, the sight, the smelling, the touch. So through those senses, Cain feels himself, receives, collects what we call Kabbalah. That's precisely what we always uh, point. Cain is a Kabbalist, a collector, somebody that gathers, that receives. This is us, mentally speaking. speaking. See all that we have within. We have knowledge, of course. But that, that type of knowledge is related with the senses. And Cain, the mind, is identified with the senses. That's why when he gets, in, gets to, to his inner being, or our inner being, and offer the outcome of our senses, our God is displeased. Because Cain is given the left over of what he gathers. His korban, which is in Hebrew, his offering is not received with good eyes. He says that his offering is from the left side, from desire. Cain first feel his own self and the rest is for God is what all the people here in this day and age in his mind think first I'm going to have a career Cain first I'm going to have this job Cain first I have to make a lot of money Cain and to have a house Cain. Then, when he, when he, when we gather all the wealth of the earth, then I will give my offering, my korban, to God. That, of course, is explained in different levels. That's why, with the passing of time, says the Bible clearly, with the passing of the days of time, Cain came and gave an offering to Jehovah. And he was displeased. Why? Well, because he's, he's giving just the leftover. And he's very fat, feeling desire. And he's very clear. The Bible explains there when, when Cain is offering his offering, he had no respect. He says, God had no respect for the offering of Cain. And Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell, his face down is not up is down to clip us and yod hebav he said unto Cain why art thou wrath and why is thy countenance fallen if thou dost well shall thou not be accepted if you do good you will be accepted but obviously he is doing good only for himself and the rest for the inner being and if thou dost not well, sin lieth at the door. That door are the senses. You see? Satisfaction of desire. And unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. So it's obvious, obvious there, very clear, 
that desire is ready with Cain. Meanwhile, many Kabbalists says that you have to feed desire. Because this says that uh, Ratzon le Kabel means to receive a lot. The desire of receive a lot. This is what Cain was doing. Feeling his desires. But the contrary, of course, of, uh, of Cain, which is the mind, terrestrial mind, is Abel. But Abel is in the heart. Is that essence. Is that breath. That vapor. That emerges from the fire. It's also related with the pineal gland. Because the pineal gland is the seat of the soul. And also related with the sexual force. Because Habel is the outcome of Eve. But in which way? This is how we have to understand and comprehend now. In which way is Abel? The good thing that God enjoys and likes his offering. Because if you read said that Abel, he was pleased. He was very pleased with the offering of Abel. But Abel is worthless. <clears throat> is that part that is not thinking I'm going to do something for me and after that for God. Is that essence, consciousness, which is empty of ego, empty of self, of myself, of what I am, what I want to be. It's just their emptiness, futile. This is what it's called. But it's weak. Because after the division of sexes, as in now, in this present day and age, it happens too. When the baby is born, when he is a child, then that vapor related with the sexual organs that we call hormones go up through its sexual organs to the brain. In the lecture, The Metallic Planets of Alchemy, the master explains how, from the zero to the seven years of age, the sexual organ of the child is releasing hormones. The firstlings is what the Bible says. And the milk. Uh, the Bible says the fat, but it's really the milk. Because the rivers of Eden are flowing with milk and honey. Milk and honey are the elements, feminine elements of the sexual organ that are very expressed in the woman because when she gets pregnant, his honey makes the, the fetus and that fetus is being fed by the breast, which is the milk. That's related with the female organ. So of course, Abel is taking the best of that energy, which is the milk and the sheep. The sheep, the symbol of the essence, of the animal essence that we have in the sexual organ. And that hormonal fluid goes up to the brain and developed. All that that we need to be developed. As you see... The hormonal force of the sexual organ, which is habel, that vapor, that breath of life, emerges from the sexual organ in different steps. As the sexual organ develops, the organism takes the hormones and develops the brain, develops the, the senses, develops other things that the physical body needs to develop. So, of course, Jehovah Elohim, which is the Holy Spirit, which is Neptune, which is Shiva in the pineal gland, is happy with Abel. Because thanks to him, because he is arising from the sexual organs and going up into all the organism, he's developing and giving to him the best. At that age, and when, the, when we are children, from zero to seven, all the inner senses are developed. 
physically, we are capable to see not only three dimensions, but the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, and even the seventh. All of us, when we were children, we were like that. That's why it is written that the second son of Eve was Hebel. Unfortunately, it's only the outcome of a wrong division because of fornication, because they are outside. They are out of Eden. Remember that the man was kicked out of Eden. But still, the process of the fire is in activity. And that's why uh, uh, that essence that all of us have works without any expectation, without waiting for any reward. As the Master Samael on the earth said, I am worthless. Yeah, because as an Ahabel, as a futile entity, as worthless, he was just being a vehicle. A vessel for his being. In order for all the sexual force to go up and develop what he developed. Of course. In us it's different. Because when we develop the personality. And then Cain becomes stronger. And all of a sudden. When we are teenagers, and sadly, in this day and age, before the teenage, they are already, I mean, Cain is already abusing the sexual energy. How did Cain kill Abel? It's easy to see. By acquiring vices, by satisfaction of the senses, all that hormonal force that was going to the brain, to the pineal gland, and to the spirit, all of a sudden, stop. Why? Because Cain came in the field with Abel. Field, which is Shada in Hebrew, implies female. In other words, Cain was jealous of the sister, of the twin sister of Abel. What is the twin sister of Abel? What is the sexual organ? There are two, we said, because we are separated in two forces, female and male. The first female sister of Abel is the masculine sexual organ. And the second sister is the vagina, the feminine sexual organ. Ah, the two sisters, the two divisions or the forces of sex that are the siblings of Hebel. You get that? And of course, he's doing that with his siblings. Hebel is taken from his sister with chastity to the brain, to the being. All these hormonal forces that they need. But all of a sudden, as I said, that stops. And when the being realizes that it stops, he says, why am I not receiving more? He goes down into the physicality of us and discover that Abel is no longer there. Cain took over. And Cain kill that innocence, that worthlessness, that emptiness that was innocence in the beginning, he killed him through masturbation and through any vice, fornication. Because it is written, this stiller of the ground, Cain, which is of course using Adam, the head, had two wives. The Bible only mentioned that, that the wife was Nama. We said always Nahema, but it's Nama, the beauty of the physicality. This Nama relates to the sense of touch, to that 
flesh. Because this is written that when Adam saw Eve, he said, this is essence of my essence, bones of my bones, and flesh of my flesh. Because the division of sexes that we are explaining here relates to the sense, to the sense of touch. Because the sexual organ is the most sensitive organ of the sense of touch. And of course, that sense, the sexual organ, gives those hormonal to Habel. But when they are in the field, when Abel and Cain are in the field, meaning in that feminine aspect, the Kabbalah says, oh, it is because Cain was jealous of Abel's sister, sexual organ. And in that field, Cain took the jar of a donkey and killed him. When the Bible says that it was the, the jar of a donkey, or the school of a donkey, but Kabbalistically it's stated, because that school symbolizes the power, of course, of the mind in the animal way, through fornication, and he is striked, you see. Instead of using the hammer of alchemy, he used that skull of the donkey and is striked against the anvil, where evil is, and kill him. This is how we did it. This is how we do it. Cain and Abel is not from the past. Adam and Eve is not from the past. He is from the present. Adam is your brain. Eve is your sexual organ. And the division of that androgenism related with Cain and Abel is inside of us too. Every single life we come and we strike Abel, our own essence, with our own mind. And we kill it. That's why we said, the king of nature that the Bible talks about doesn't exist. Only the killer of nature, which is Cain. It says that Cain was the first killer. Yeah. And he's there, still within us, killing our own nature. Of course, our sin is unforg unforgivable. That's why it is said that when God came and saw that Cain killed Abel, he says, now you are going to be a bagman, an outcast. Get out of here. But those people that recognize their sin, like us, that come and we recognize that we really are doing bad with our mind, with our sex, and then we repent. And then half of that is taken. And God said, okay, you will be not an outcast, but a vagabond. Still, if you kill Cain, if Cain is killed, then you will be forgiven. And it's a process. This is a process of a chemical process that we have to do. Because the force of the fire goes down because of fornication, because of Cain. Cain, of course, is a killer that tills the ground and feeds desire. And because of the other sheen, the other fire that in Hebrew is Shatan, and that is translated as Satan. You see, the word Shatan, Satan, begins with Shin. Why? Because it's the inverted fire. That's why the Master Samael on Veor explains in his books, Devil, Hell, and Karma, that the false myths, those that work in the false way through alchemy, develops the Kundavafer organ, the tail of Shatan, which is the fire of 
Eve going downwards. You see, the fire of Eve. In other words, the fire of the sexual organ. That's why when that sexual organ gives birth, sin is already attached to the kunda buffer, to the fire of the tail of Satan, gives birth in pure children. Children that are already attached to sin, to desire. All of us. So Shatan, of course, begins there with the fire. Inverted. Send it to Klippoth. But when we know this mystery, we begin as Cain. Because Cain is alive. You have to admit it. The Bible says there, and he lived in the land of Nod. Nod, what we said, nodding, right? No. Negative. He lived there. He's alive. But Abel is dead. And all of us. So we have to resuscitate Abel. If we want to receive forgiveness. And to annihilate all of that that we created related with Cain. In order for Kainan to emerge from us. You see there? The word is also written in the Bible. This Kainan was the son of Enosh. So behold the three aspects of this mysterious name. Cain, Tubal Cain, and Kainan. Same same entity, same mind. Cain is the one that does the stupidity of fornicating, masturbating. Tubal Cain is the one that starts working with the iron, trying to get something for his forgiveness. And the outcome of it, when it's done, is Kainan. This word Kainan, is written in the same way of Cain. The only difference is it has two nuns at the end. Cain and Cainan. Two nuns. Meaning, that is the outcome of two seeds. Because the nun symbolizes the sperm or the oven. So Cainan is telling us that is the cerebrospinal column already nourished by two seeds. The oven and the sperm, within which is the fire. You see how everything is hidden there? Inside of us. This myth has many meanings. Because, Kabbalistically speaking, every single myth has seven interpretations. Seven. But according to Kabbalah, each seven has ten sephiroth. So it is seventy and the derivations or derivatives, as we said. So what we're explaining here is in relation with Shin. Now you have to ask, because we gave many lectures about this already in different aspects. So <coughs> this is why. Jesus of Nazareth, the great Kabir Jesus, said at that time, 2,000 years ago, to the Kabbalists. Jesus answered and said unto them, Well hath Isaiah prophesied of you hypocrites, as it is written, These people honor me with their lips, but the heart is far from me. You see? Habel is the heart. Howbeit, in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men, for lying aside the commandments of God, ye hold the tradition of men, as the washing of pots and cups, and many other such like things ye do. And he said unto them, Full well ye reject the commandment of God that ye may keep your own traditions. 
For Moses said, Honor thy father and thy mother, and whosoever curse father or mother, let him die the second death. Second is added by me. He says, let him die the death. What is the second death? Who is this father and mother? It's not religion, it's not all tradition saying that we are children of Adam and Eve. Yes, Adam and Eve is our father and mother. But it's not from the past. Alchemically speaking, it's here and now. Your father, Adam, is your central nervous system that is floating in the cerebral spinal fluid, the sexual force of the father. And your mother is the sexual organ, Eve, which nurtures us in the feminine sexual liquid in her womb before we get born in this, in the still, in, phys in our physicality, that liquid is in the prostate and the uterus. So that is our mother and that's our father, physically speaking. We are not going up in the higher sephira, only here, in this physicality. So if you don't honor your father and mother physically, how are you going to honor there the ones that are in the higher sephiroth? To honor father and mother is korban. Kuf, because there, the letter kuf related with the spinal central nervous system. That's korban, an offering. Cain was given an offering. And also, Abel was given an offering. When you are a child, the transmutation or the sublimation of those hormonal forces from the sexual organ to the brain and to all the endocrinal system is something as an offering. And when we start transmuting the sexual force and releasing the steam, the breath, which is Habel in Hebrew, then God is pleased. But Cain doesn't do that. Cain likes to fornicate. So that's why he says, Moses says, honor father and mother. That begins from the physical body. That means that we have to study the cerebral and spinal fluid and the sexual fluid in the prostate and the uterus in order to know how to honor father and mother. Honor is always related with chastity. But ye say, if a man shall say to his father or mother, it is korban, that is to say, an offering, by whatsoever thou mayest be profited by me, he shall be free. This is what the tradition says, what Jesus has stated here. And ye suffer him no more to do aught for his father or his mother, making the word of God of none effect through your traditions, which you have delivered in many such like things you do. So this is why Jesus was stating that, you know. Because when we say, honor your father and mother, we all many think, oh, yeah, I honor my, my father. That is uh, such and such fellow. You give the name of his personality and my mother, such and such fellow too. No. Of course, we have to respect our parents, physical parents. But the commandment is related with those forces that we have to honor in our system. If we don't do that, even if we follow the tradition, we are hypocrites. Because we, in many traditions, in many organizations, they say, okay, give the tithe. Give your offering. And you give $1,000, you will receive more. And in heaven, the treasures, etc., etc. And they don't realize that you have to begin with your own treasures in heaven, in your own self. If you are not honoring your father and mother, you are not doing korban. Korban is associated with animal sacrifices. This is what Cain was doing. Sacrificing the animals. What animals? It's not the animals that are outside. It's the animals that we have within. We have to sacrifice first 
the, for, the animal force in the childhood that is normally done because Cain is innocent and I mean Habel is innocent and he's receiving that force to the brain and to the whole system. But when we are already with a personality and we all already risen, then we have to do it by our own will and kill animals, sacrifice animals. That is Corban. Anger is an animal in us. Greed, lust, laziness, gluttony, etc. All of that. And this is how God will be pleased with us. He will like that. That type of Corban. But if we think our only, uh, it's, it's just enough, just give, give the, the leftover to God and that's enough. And you will be free. This is what Jesus said there. Ignoring the, the value of the commandment. See, the commandments of God given by Moses are ten. Fill it with the ten sephiroth. Fill it with those that walk on the path. It is not by believing in them that you are going to be saved or, or be transformed. This is by doing what we have to do. And that's why the Bible states in the beginning of the fifth chapter <coughs> that Adam knew his wife. And he, he says, Adam, begat a son into his own image, into his own likeness, and named him Seth. Actually, the word Seth begins with Sheen as well. You see? Because the letter Sheen, you can say S or Sh. But if you read the Bible in Hebrew, the, the name Seth begins with Shin, with fire, and ends with Tav, which is the letter Tav, which is the cross. Because the mystery of those letters that come after the letter Kuf, with which you write Cain, are Resh, Shin, Tav. R, Shin, and T, or the, the cross. Which are related, of course, with the mystery of what I'm explaining here. The letter R refers to the head, Resh. The letter Shin relates to the fire and Tav to the cross. And those three letters hide the mystery of the uh, transformation of Cain into Seth, or better said, into Cainan. Because the Bible states that when Eve gave birth to Seth, which is the third son, it is written like this. And Adam knew his wife again, and she bare a son and called his name Seth, which is with Shin. For God said, she had appointed me another seed instead of Habel, whom Cain slew. And to Seth, to him also there was born a son, and he, and he called his name Enosh. Then is when, the, when humanity began to call upon the name of yod heh bab -He. In other words, when one reaches the level of human, which is Enosh, because Seth is the outcome of the fire, when you transmute, that the third son, the third son of Adam and Eve. Remember that. Adam and Eve is your brain and your sex. Don't go outside. It's inside of you. So when you start doing the work, then you begat inside of you, Seth which is the outcome of the knowledge of good and evil. And that's why when Seth is being born in you, and then Seth gives birth in Osh, which is, means through that, that fire, Seth, which is the cross and the fire, the meaning of the mystery of the fire in the cross, in Re, in other words, that's Seth. In Osh is the outcome. In other words, the human being 
is the outcome. That human being that we always think we are, the human being really has seven bodies. And that's Enosh. That is similar to the son of Cain. When Cain are out and knew his wife, he engendered Enoch. But that's different. Meaning a kind a type of vision that relates to the lower chakras. Because humanity is knowing evil and is awakened and seeing things in Klipoth, in hell. But with the time when you repent and transmute and transform yourself, then Seth is being born in you. That Seth, of course, is the energy that rises in the spinal column and that gives birth to Enosh, which is also with Shin at the end, Enosh, the Shin, you see, the fire again. Shatan is already out and Enosh is there. And then Enosh gave birth Kainan, which is, of course, the outcome of all the things that we talk here. We have to become Kainan, the son of Enosh, in order for us to say, okay, I know now good and evil. That's Kainan. But now we are only Cain, and we're starting. The, to do the work, that chemical work. Do you get that? It is important that in order to comprehend, because all of these archetypes that you find in the Bible relates to alchemy and Kabbalah. I know things from the past, for from the present. It's a guidance in order for you to know how to work. And we need, of course, to reach that level in order to receive the grace of God. Because only Enosh can receive the grace of God. Meaning that gift that you call Jesus Christ. Which is an archetype that you have to incarnate. But first, you have to reach the level of Enosh. Before that, you cannot incarnate it. Because you have to build the vessels that will take that within you in order for you to receive the grace, which is that salvation that is hidden in the war in the name of Yeshua. And behold here also, that the name Yeshua, which is translated as Jesus in Hebrew, has the letter Shin in the middle. That's the other aspect. In order for you to receive that shin in the middle of yod he bar he, because when you put the shin in the middle of the word yod he bar he, you read Yeshua. That's the Messiah that enters into you when you read the level of Enosh. Then you can say, we are not saved or the, to keep this work is going to be done by grace. Because the Lord, the Christ, which is fire, will help you to annihilate that animality that is impossible to you to annihilate. And to deal with your karma, with your debt that you have because all of the evil deeds that you did in the past. And that fire within you then do the work. And thus receive the grace of God. But you have to reach that level. It's not like many people think, oh, just because it is written. Because Paul of Tarsus talk about that. That we are continue working not by, by deeds, but by, by faith. Because the initiations end with Enosh. The rest is just annihilation. That is performed at the holy denying. And that holy denying is precisely Habel. United with the fire. That Habel is a human soul. 
which already denies himself completely, worthless, I am nothing. But the Lord is eliminating all of that. That is something. In order to make Habel empty again, in order for the God to enter into the human being to appear. That's precisely the work of Jesus Christ, that archetype, that was represented by the Master of Veramento and that is written in the Gospels. But the people thought and they took that in the wrong way, thinking that we are going to receive that archetype right now just by believing in him or just by reading or memorizing what is written in the Gospels or in the letters of Paul. That's wrong. We need to do a lot of work because faith without work is dead. And when we reach that level, then comes the other aspect of the development of the initiation. Do you have questions? Well, it is obvious that uh, money is necessary in this day and age. Or to have shelter, food, and uh, cloth is necessary. But we have to be happy with the rights of Cancherita. The rights of Cancherita are only that. What the Master Jesus said is this. Everything else will be added unto you. If by law you receive money, you receive wealth, receive it happily. And use it wisely. Because to be rich physically in this world is not a sin, it's not a crime. But to live only for that, to be alive for that, and to just exercise yourself, just in order to get money, more money, more money, like this society... Of course, that's a waste of time. You need a, a career in order to survive in this uh, uh, society. It is good. You need money, yeah. But don't make that your priority. Because sooner or later you will die. <coughs> Everything that you have will be left here in the earth. And then you will face your own God. He says, what do you have for me? Oh, well, you know, I just was making a lot of money there because I had to survive there. Okay, go back and try to do something for me. And you return again. And then you commit a mistake again. Oh, I had to be, I have a lot of money, I make my career, etc. It's good, yeah. But make more time to your inner God. Because the wealth in heaven is first. And the rest is added unto us. It is difficult. To get that point because uh, most of us are so identified with this society. You, 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 we have to get what we need. Know what we covet. Remember, you shall not covet the things of the earth. What is necessary. If we covet the things of heaven, of course, that's also wrong. We, don't, we shouldn't covet the things from the earth, neither the things from heaven. But in the beginning, when we start doing this work, we start with Cain. Because he is alive, right? And Abel is dead. That's the point. So we start like that. Cain is alive. Abel is dead. What we have to do? To resuscitate Abel. And for that, we need to work with the Holy Denying. To take out all those egos until Abel is growing, 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 growing in us and developing. And remember that Abel is worthless, futile, emptiness. Meaning that what you're doing is a work for God. 
But in the beginning, of course, you will find egos related with Cain that covet, even in spiritual things. And that's precisely the problem of many meditators. When you sit down and try to meditate and to experience something related with God, you don't do it because you are coveting that. It's Cain there meditating. You know, you have to feel empty. Not to covet anything because the truth comes to us without any expectation. Every experience with God comes like that without coveting it. But when we start coveting it, we don't have it. And of course, uh, that's a problem. We are 97% uh, ego, Cain, and 3% Abel. And for our disgrace, is dead. We have to take it out from, from there and to put him active. A bell in the heart is intuition. A bell in the pineal gland is to remember yourself moment after moment. Here and now, that's a bell. And the transmutation is the steam, the breath that goes out is a bell as well. Sacrifice for humanity is a bell. Gives the, the, the first thing to God. But to reach that or to develop that is, of course, not easy. because we, That's why we had to meditate a lot to comprehend the ego. And only to release. And to reach the level in which we said, I'm worthless. When God says, you are worthless, okay, I'm now in you. I want to do something through you because you are not doing anything. But if we think, oh yeah. I'm capable of everything. And so it's got well, you are capable of what I'm going to be inside of you. Keep doing it. Right? This is we are we are so proud, unfortunately. <coughs> so do you get this right? Do you understand? Did you understand? Did you comprehend what is Adam, what is Eve, what is the alchemical work? What is Cain and Abel within you? What is Seth? Enosh? Because when you read the Bible, I said Enosh, Adam, sh, uh, sh, uh, Ish, related to men. Sometimes you say, yeah, men, men, men. But sometimes it doesn't say men, it says Ish. When you write men, it says Adam. It's sometimes men again, but it says Enosh. But every single name has a different meaning. That Enosh is the outcome of all the alchemy. That Adam is your brain, is the part of you, positive, that has, you have to work with. And the rest, of course, is the duality within you. Problem is that when you read the Bible, uh, the translations, the people that translated the Bible are not initiates, are not Kabbalists, are not alchemists. They are just translations, and they did the be their best. And on top of that come other people trying to explain what is translated so poorly. And then when you read the Bible, there are people there that said, the whole Bible explained. And you find a big book and every single paragraph explained according to Cain. When you read that, it says, this is Cain explaining here the mystery. And of course, that's why uh, uh, somebody... Uh, suggested to me, why do you write at least the book of Genesis, Gnostically speaking? I said, what? You want me to write the Mahabharata? Is what you want? I said, big thing. This is not just, you see, you take one archetype and you disclose it in one, but it means another thing. Seven interpretations and ten times seven. How do you want to write that? At the end, you will be lost. It is better to meditate to comprehend that in your consciousness in order not to be lost. It depends what you see. In relation with this lecture, I was studying and I see, I see what you see. But there's other things hidden there. The archetypes are represented in many ways. And we have to learn that. Because that's the problem of this humanity. They have the Bible, but they do not understand it. And that's why there are many sects and many problems. 
And when you go into Kabbalah and alchemy, well, people say, well, this is a lot. What do we have to do in order to understand this? Patience. You know, this is the tree of life. That's why we have in the website many tools for you to understand, to study, and to understand that all of that is in relation with you. When you associate that with you inside, then you comprehend more. Uh, if there is no other question, yes? The fire awakens consciousness when you release it. I mean, it's a fire, it's a fire of, of, uh, of Haba, of Eve, the ones that put the essence into activity. For that, of course, we have to release that fire. Because usually, when the, we are active, sexually speaking, and we reach the orgasm or the spasm, that liquid or fluid, feminine fluid that we have in a sexual organ is the habitat of that fire. And if that fire is released, if the water is released, the fire is released. But if we learn how to release the fire towards inside, inwardly, by practicing pranayama, and we are bachelors or bachelorettes, then that fire will illuminate your consciousness, will resuscitate your habel. And if you do it in the very sexual act, by combining the fire of husband and wife, it is even better, because then the fire rises with more strength in the middle of your spinal column, and that is Seth, that eventually will give birth in Osh, the human being within you. But it's a process. The fire has to develop 33 degrees in your spinal column, really with your 33 vertebrae. So it's in steps and degrees that the fire goes up and in seven scales. In order to comprehend how that fire uh, awakens and develops that, read the book, The Three Mountains, or the Mountain Samael on the Or where he synthesized there, the work of the fire. Because Samael is the king of fire. And he's playing that very well. So, remember, the fire that we're talking here is a sexual fire. That we need to learn how to transmute the fire of your sexual organs. Because the other fire hidden within the Cerebral and spinal fluid is already positive, but unfortunately polluted by Eve. So we had to clean it. That's a great work because the cerebral spinal fluid nourishes the brain, the medulla, and the uh, excess of fluid is absorbed by the blood. It nourishes the other uh, nervous systems. The grand sympathetic and the parasympathetic, which are the, we would say, the helpers of the central nervous system. And by doing that is how the fire will awake the chakras, the churches, and you will find the mysteries of the book of Revelation within you, your spinal column. Another question. In order to create the internal bodies, the solar bodies, that's the question, right? It says that it takes nine months in the womb of, uh, of a woman in order to create the physical body. Nine months. How long it takes in order to create the internal bodies? Well, that is a process. Because the Divine Mother is the one that creates also within us. But for that, she demands from us uh, the moral level to acquire that gift. 
So that's why we had to work along with transmutation, meditation, comprehension of the ego. And uh, for instance, this great master, uh, Helen Petrova Blavatsky, she was single. And she worked a lot with yoga. No Atha yoga, other type of yoga. And she awoke a lot of powers. But she didn't have their internal bodies. And, he, and she wrote a lot because she awoke a lot. That's all right. So then, uh, in 20, uh, the Master Samael says, in 10 years, in 10 years, she built all his solar bodies. But those 10 years w were based on all the work that she made and helped, and all the psychological work that he, she already did in the past. That's why it was easy in 10 years of alchemical work. But other people that are not so, uh, how do you call serious, like Madame Lavasky, that was dedicating her life to that, well, if you are combining, as you said, like Cain, this and that, it depends. Maybe in five years of serious work in alchemy, you will work your, you will build your astral body. And like that, other bodies that we need to, to build in order to reach the level of Enosh, human. So, of course, the more you work with the three factors, the more you speed your, your, your walk, your initiation. If you work with the three factors once in a while, so once in a while you will have it. If you work with the three factors every day without rest, doing what you can for humanity, meditating in your ego and transmuting your sexual energy, then you will advance very fast. So there is no time. There is only, as the Bible says, time, times, and a half of a time. That's Kabbalistically. So you have to inquire, what is that time, times, and a half of a time? That is various in each one of us. For the completion of the great work. Do you have another question? Thank you very much. To learn more about what you learned in this lecture, we invite you to explore the books published by Gloria and Publishing, available from booksellers worldwide. You may also be interested in online courses or upcoming retreats, all of which you can learn about at GnosticTeachings.org. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Will you help others to benefit from this knowledge? Most spiritual schools recommend a donation of $10 to $20 per lecture. Every donation helps. Make a donation now at GnosticTeachings.org. Thank you. May all beings be happy. Yeah,